Canyon rebuilt the Spectral for 2021 with a whole new frame built to take 29 inch wheels up from the 650B hoops that the previous version enjoyed. Canyon's triple phase suspension remains in place though, as does the general aesthetic of the bike, one which we reckon is pretty darn good. Canyon are offering two flavours of the Spectral 2. There are a pair of Shimano and Fox builds with burlier components on a 160mm fork plugged into the 150mm frame. You can find a first ride review of that bike in this video's description. Or there are two 150-150 builds, such as the one I've been riding, with RockShox's suspension and SRAM gears. These have a slightly lighter weight, perhaps more trail oriented build, and so slotted perfectly into my 2021 Trail Bike of the Year test. So, how did it fare? Well, it didn't win, but I still reckon the Spectral has to be one of the best trail bikes out there at the moment. I'll detail why it missed out on our top step later in this video. However, I'll lead with the fact that Canon has built one of the best trail platforms around with a frame and linkage that performs almost faultlessly. Now I hate bike tester cliches as much as you do, but the Spectral's rear suspension really is supple and grippy in its early stroke, supportive in the middle and progressive and controlled towards the end. Don't worry though, I'm not going to say laterally stiff and vertically compliant though, even if it is. So before I go into too much detail, I'll give you some context to this year's Trail Bike of the Year test. I tested eight bikes this year. You may have noticed in the news some global events that have impacted on bike availability, and this did make getting hold of the bikes fairly tricky. Usually there's a £3,000 price limit, and this was my intention this year. However, as time went on, it had to be relaxed a little bit as some of the bikes were starting to creep over this price limit. Likewise, the impact of Brexit wasn't really clear until the new year, which again impacted on the cost of some of the bikes in this test. When this happened, my reviews focused more on the frame than the kit, and I endeavoured to comment on models of the bike which either hit the price point that I couldn't get hold of, or gave other options within the range. It's not an ideal situation, and I am really sorry about that, but neither is a global pandemic, and we won't go into the politics of Brexit. I'd also like to give a big thanks to Bike Park Wales. Testing has been tricky this year thanks to group ride restrictions and travel restrictions. And so Bike Park Wales' kind offer to let us use their tracks for work purposes while they were closed was really appreciated. Needless to say, with no uplift, I've pedalled up a lot of hills during testing. Canyon has won many fans with their triple phase suspension linkage which is a four bar system and here it provides a 150mm of travel at the back. An aluminium rocker link pushes a shock through its travel into the middle of the down tube, leaving space for a bottle just underneath the damper. Canyon has given the Spectral replaceable threaded inserts on the frame, meaning if you do manage to mangle, say, a shock bolt threaded nut, it can be swapped out without causing extensive damage to the frame. The usual gamut of frame finishing touches that we'd expect to see are all present here too internal cable routing, ISC Geo 5 mounts, down tube and chainstay protection, and neat blanking plugs for the bottle cage bosses. If aesthetics matter to you, Canyon's industrial designers have, in my opinion at least, done a cracking job, with continual lines front to rear, smooth transfers between tubes, and sympathetic paintwork to draw the eye across the bike. Canyon cannot be criticised for their approach to geometry too, with a very up-to-date shape on their latest trail bike. A long 485mm reach features on a size large, along with a slack 645 degree head angle, steep 765 degree seat angle, and mid-length 437mm stays. The 460mm seat tube is perhaps the only obvious area for improvement. A shorter one would allow a longer drop dropper for those who like to tackle the steepest of steeps. That said, it's 20mm shorter than the previous generation's spectral seat tube, and we see a shorter head tube too. Excellent news, as I felt the previous generation Spectral just felt a little too tall for my liking, both in the seat and head tube areas. There is a flip chip should you wish to steepen the angles and improve gland clearance for technical climbs. Switching it over adds 0.5 degrees to the head and seat angles and 8mm to the bottom bracket height. For the purpose of this review, I'm talking about the bike in its low position, because that's how I tested it for the most part, and were I to own the bike, I'd put it straight into the lower setting and, most likely, it would never emerge from it. SRAM features heavily across this version of the Spectral. 160mm versions receive a Fox 36 and Shimano builds, but this one has a 150mm RockShox Pike Select RC fork that has low speed compression and rebound adjustment, and a matching Deluxe Select Plus rear shock. 
This has a two position compression dial, giving that lockout as well as rebound adjustment. Pushing and pulling the bike to and fro is pretty much a full SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain, with its new 10 to 52 tooth cassette and alloy cranks, while G2 R brakes with 280 mm rotors complete the SRAM package. As we see frequently, DT Swiss provide the wheels, this time with a 30 mm wide internally M1900. They're shod in Maxxis tyres, a 2.5 inch Minion DHF at the front and slightly faster but still nice and aggressive 2.4 inch Dissector at the back. They're both proper triple compound jobbers with the EXO sidewall. The Minion is one of my favourite tyres with, I find at least, decent predictable grip without too much drag. The Dissector impressed too. It rolls and corners well while still having plenty of grip. Canyon's own component tree largely finishes the build. Their G5 cockpit is borrowed from their more aggressive Torque Sender Strive lines, showing Canyon's intent for this bike to be pushed towards the limits of the trail rider. The Iridium dropper has 150mm of travel and on top sits an Ergon saddle, a company based very close, in more ways than one, to Canyon's Kublenz HQ. So that's all the facts and figures out of the way. But what's it like to ride? Effortless is the term that first sprung to mind when I jumped on the Spectral. It's an incredibly easy bike to ride, needs little to no adjustment to riding style, and I reckon most riders would very happily jump on and start setting some PRs as soon as the wheels start turning. That's thanks to the shape of the bike, which throws out no surprises, and also the rear suspension, which is some of the best in the business. No doubt it's also helped by a very competent parts package. Geometry-wise, while it's not the most radical trail bike out there, the numbers all add up to give plenty of confidence and control whatever the trail. The 485mm reach gives a nice balance between front-end stability without it feeling like an effort to manoeuvre later into the ride. This is paired with a 645 degree head angle, which puts the front wheel nicely ahead of the bike, easily allowing you to confidently weight it in a corner or on loose terrain without too much worry of it washing out or projecting you over the front. I found it a really easy bike to rally through corners and point down steeper chutes. If you want even more performance on the steeps, check out the CF6 or CF8 models which gain that extra 10mm of travel at the front with an associated slightly slacker head angle and a Fox 36 fork for added authority through the chunder. Looking further back, we find Canyon's triple phase suspension. It's their take on the traditional 4 bar linkage and truth be told, it's up there with the best rear suspension as I've already said. It's sensitive, so it soaks up high frequency trail chatter early in its stroke for a comfortable ride and predictable traction whether under braking or acceleration, uphill or down. The mid-stroke is underpinned by utmost stability. Through corners it holds you up and you can really push it into the middle of its travel to get an extra boost on the lip of the jump. Jab at the pedals and the suspension remains rock solid, projecting you forward. It barely wallows at all on those flatter, more pedally tracks. And with all that composure and traction, it climbs very well too. Then, later on, when you really clatter the bike into a landing, it reaches the end of its travel with perfect finesse. The ramp up is smooth with no jarring through the hills. You can get it to the end of the travel, but when you do so, it barely feels like you've hit the bump stops. So why has the Spectral not won our annual trail bike of year test? Well, truth be told, in another year it may well have done. But while back in the day the name Canyon was synonymous with value, we don't feel that the £3,656 price tag, and that's delivered to the UK including shipping, packaging and associated taxes, quite comes with the parts package to compete. The GX Eagle drivetrain is on par with other bikes, but the G2R brakes lack the all-out power and adjustment of their slightly pricier siblings that we've seen elsewhere in this test. Likewise, the DT Swiss M1900 wheels are very good hoops, but maybe in the past we've been spoilt by posher wheels. Then it comes to the fork and shock. We really like the Pike fork, but the Select RC level fork has the older Charger RC damper rather than the Charger 2.1 found on the Select Plus fork. It's good, but not quite as plush as it could be on staccato hits. I am nitpicking here, and while I almost feel bad for doing so, truth be told, the Spectral is one of the four bikes that could very easily have won trail bike of the year. But this time, it just misses out. If you don't, however, and you do purchase one, I'm fairly confident you'll be very impressed with the bike's capabilities. I hope that's given you a bit of an insight into the Spectral, but I'm really keen to hear your thoughts, and if you've got any questions, pop them into the comments section below. 
As ever, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get a notification every time we upload a new video.